since you sang the last hymn in the book, you get credit for all the others. So the, let me call your attention to these announcements. And as I do, if you would pass the friendship book down the aisle, it's on the inside of those aisles there and pass them down the row. We'd appreciate that. Want to especially welcome the visitors with us today. We're glad to have you here. We hope that you'll come back and worship with us again if this is your first time. And if not, we hope you'll keep coming. Then, and to let you know that William A. Hodap, Sr., Sue had Hodap's father-in-law, passed away Wednesday, June 22nd at Jefferson Manor. The funeral was yesterday at Highlands Funeral Home. Also, in Emory Hall, right after worship today, you're going to have the opportunity to put your fingerprints on the new cross that's going to be out in front of the church. And so if you would go down there after service and do that, that would be wonderful. If for some reason you can't stay today, it will also, this uh, process will also be taking place Monday night, June 27th, that's this Monday, from 6.30 until 8 in Emory Hall as well. The next Raise the Roof is July 9th, Saturday, July 9th. If you'd like to volunteer to help provide lunch, please contact Brian Pollock. We once again want to welcome you here and let us stand and greet one another this time. Let us pray. O oh God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for this beautiful sunshine today. We thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for showering us with love. Now we come to offer you worship. We come to sit in your presence, and we pray that we might have you visit us this morning in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Becky is leaving for Pittsburgh, and we're trying to raise money now to fly her back every weekend. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work out, because I don't think she'd come back every weekend. But uh, we thank her for sharing that with us this morning. Will you stand and join me in the call to worship? We call to mind your deeds, O Lord. Your name, O God, is holy. We remember the wonders of creation. Having brought order out of chaos. We recall your leading us to freedom. Let us worship God. that we can take a hard look at our sins. The Lord invites us to transparently confess our sin, our brokenness, and our emptiness. Let us take a moment to confess our sins before God and one another. God of the prophets, we confess that we have failed to heed your word. We hear your call to discipleship, but we find it too demanding. We hear the summons to follow you, but we let other allegiances claim us. Forgive us, God of grace. We place our lives in your hands. Set us free to love you, 
our neighbors, and ourselves, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Know this, God is at work in us. God is remaking us. In this way, we know that we are forgiven and set free to try again. If we are open to God's work in us, then we shall serve God and each other in love. Amen. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from Galatians 5, verses 1 and 13 through 25. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For, who, for, for the whole law is summed up in a single command. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. Lost my spot. <laughs> now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and other things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us alone be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. This is the word of the Lord.
children to come down, please. Any kiddos out there? Anybody else? There's Francis. There's Riley. Come on down, guys. Hi, we've got a good group today. Good morning. Come on in. Hi, hi, everybody. Just grab a seat. No, this is for later. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Good morning. So I want to tell you guys a funny story today. The craziest thing happened to me yesterday. We ran out of milk at home. And you need milk for everything. You can't eat cereal without milk. You can't bake a cake without milk. You just need milk in the house. So I said, I'm going to run to the grocery store and grab a gallon of milk. And let me tell you what happened. I got to the grocery store, and I walked in by the produce section. And there were some really good-looking bananas. So I grabbed some bananas, because, you know, they're great for breakfast when you're in a rush. Then I went a little farther, and there was the snack aisle, and I found Teddy Grahams. Who doesn't love Teddy Grahams? So I put those in my little basket on my arm. I got a little farther. I found some peanut butter that goes really well with the Teddy Grahams, so I got those too. And then I remembered we're going to go to some friend's house tonight, and I needed to bake some brownies. So I got some brownie mix. Yum. If you're going to have brownies, you have to do ice cream and hot fudge syrup on top to make it right. So I got all those. And then finally, guess what I found? Eggs. I remember we needed eggs. So then I headed to the checkout. I paid. I loaded up the grocery bag in my car and headed home. What did I forget? The whole reason I went to the grocery was for the milk. I forgot the milk. So I guess you could say I got distracted when I got in the grocery. I found some yummy things that looked a lot better than milk, and they just totally called me off the path that I was headed to, and I got all the way home without my milk. Exactly. I was distracted and paying attention to things I didn't need and forgot what I was there for, and what I really needed was the milk. And you know, this goes back to something very similar that Mr. John's going to be talking about today in our scripture lessons today. Jesus says, you have to stay focused on me. You have to follow me, and you have to follow God, and you have to be a good Christian, and obey your parents, and be friends with everybody at school, and be nice, and listen, and don't get distracted, because there's going to be temptations, and there's going to be things along the way that are going to want to make you get off that path. But he says we always need to stay focused on being a good Christian, okay? Can we say a quick prayer? We repeat after me. Dear God, please help me to be a good Christian and not get distracted. Yours in Christ, always. Amen. He's headed to the refrigerator. Let's, our gospel reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke, reading from the ninth chapter, verses 51 through 62. Listen for the word of God to you. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him. Did not, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests.
but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those in, at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And all God's people said, Jesus has just turned his face toward Jerusalem in Luke's gospel in 951. He's going to the cross and suddenly this whole idea of discipleship takes on a whole nother level of meaning. It's getting deadly serious. Jesus has talked to the disciples about the cost of discipleship, about taking up their cross and following him, but they don't get it. He sends them on ahead of him, and they go to this village of Samaria, and the Samaritans don't receive him, and the disciples think it would be a good idea to call down fire from heaven on them. Now, Elisha got away with this in the Old Testament, and they're probably flashing back thinking that would be a good idea for them. But Jesus rebuked them for what they said, thinking probably, you know, these guys just don't get it. They don't seem to understand. Discipleship, not an easy thing. We spent the last 10 days or so uh, in Texas. Janie and I were there with our whole extended family, uh, Janie's side of the family. And we were getting ready to leave. And as it turns out, uh, Jeff, my son, and I were getting to come back. Janie was going to stay in Dallas with the grandchild. You know, this happens a lot, okay? And so she was going to stay and fly back. Jeff's wife, Leslie, had gone out to be at the General Assembly. She's a Presbyterian pastor. And so Jeff and I are left with the two boys to come back home. We drive that first 10 hours to Batesville, Arkansas, and uh, without any incident, really. There was one little bathroom accident, but uh, we were able to clean me up. And uh, <laughs> so we... We got to Batesville, spent the night. I got up the next morning, and I'm driving back for my eight-hour leg of this 18-hour drive. And so I get to the place where I'm going to have my second cup of coffee at a McDonald's just inside Kentucky. I go, and I stand in line, and I notice no one's waiting on me. I finally look above me, and there's a sign that says, Pick up orders here. So I went and got in the line that said, order here. And that worked much better, except I stepped right in front of a woman who was already in that line. And so I apologized to her, and I got behind her. She said, oh, no, you go, no, no. I said, no, no. I, you know, I wanted to try to be a good disciple and to show a little humility and to take my proper place and not cut in line. And I'm thinking to myself, of course, it's not that big a deal. It's just one person. Well, then she gets up to the counter and she says, I'll have three orders of fries. I want two Happy Meals. I'll need a quarter pounder. And then she screams, hey, James, you want cheese on that quarter pounder? Sally Lou, get off that chair. And I look, the whole restaurant is full of children and apparently all of them are hers. She's ordering for these kids. And we go on and on. And I'm sitting there going, it really is true what they say about the cost of discipleship. There's a high price you pay for this, really. Jesus is trying to help the disciples understand what the priorities are to be in their lives, what's really most important, and what needs to happen. And they just don't get it because it's hard for us to understand that there's so many other priorities 
that keep cropping up in our lives. Now, most of us think about those as bad things. You know, we say, yes, you know, you shouldn't play so much golf, or you shouldn't uh, play so much of this, or do so much of that, or you shouldn't vacation. All these things that you need to prioritize in your lives. But what we find in this story is that the people that come to Jesus and want to follow, one says that he wants to follow, and Jesus tells him, he says, well, foxes have their holes, birds have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Now, is that any kind of answer when a person says, I want to follow you? What's going on here? And Jesus is saying that are you willing to live completely dependent on the hospitality of others? Are you willing to surrender your control in that way and follow me? Because that's what it means to follow, is to be totally dependent on me. And then another person comes along and says that he wants to first bury his father. Now that's a good thing. And Jesus says, let the dead bury their own dead. What in the world is Jesus talking about? Let the dead bear their own dead? Well, one commentator says what he thinks that means is let those who are spiritually dead bury their own dead. You, on the other hand, are to be about preaching the gospel. You are to stay focused on what God has called you to do and to be. And then the final person that asked him says, first let me go and say goodbye to my family. A good thing. And Jesus says, no one who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is worthy of the kingdom of God. No one, no one who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is worthy of the kingdom of God. Pretty hard stuff. Jesus is saying that we are to be completely focused on God in our lives and to realize we are completely dependent on God in our lives. What does that mean? What does it mean to prioritize our lives in a way that God is first and everything else is in second place or less. When I was in the fourth grade, Miss Smith, our, my teacher, took us on a trip around the world for our geography class. She said, we're going to go on a, a trip around the world, and what I want you to do tonight, I want you to go home, and I want you to write down a list of everything that you want to pack in your suitcase. And so that night I went home and I was making my list. And I will tell you, there are times in life when you really, really wish that you did not have an older sister that had all the same teachers that you had. Because she was really smart and they loved my sister. And so they expected me to be smart and so they were disappointed. Always going, well, Gwen, don't tell me. But that particular night was a wonderful night because Gwen stuck her head in to my room and she said, don't forget to pack your Bible and make sure it's first on your list. So when Miss Smith the next day picked up Charles Brown's paper and began to read and she looked at him and she said, Charles, I don't see a Bible on your list. I knew right then he was going to burn. <laughs> Miss Smith was a Sunday school teacher at the Baptist Church. Took no prisoners. Anyway, so when she got to my list, she said, John, very good. 
And I was so thankful for my sister who told me the right answer. What does it mean for God to be first in your life? What difference does that make? On Friday, I was at the gym where I play tennis in the morning. And I got out, uh, my, I finished my tennis game, and I walk out, and all these men are gathered around a TV set. And they are watching, golly, they are watching, of course, the story of the stock market. Everyone's glued, and they're paying very close attention as they give us one bad news, one bit of bad news after another. Your 401k is going down. Your retirement account's going down. This is going down. That's going down. Everyone is sitting, standing, looking shocked. And then over in the corner, there's a man. His name is Dale, and Dale is about oh, mid-50s, and he um, is uh, Caucasian, and he was there doing what he does every day, which is he cleans the club. He cleans the bathrooms, he cleans the shower stalls, he cleans everything. And there he is scrubbing the floor, getting ready to go in and clean the bathrooms. Everyone else has this look of shock and despair on their face. Dale is totally not concerned. Guess what? Dale doesn't have any money in the stock market. Dale hardly has any money at all, probably, and he's not the least bit concerned. Hmm. Where is our trust? What are those things that we put our trust in? Jesus says, it's supposed to be God. Jesus says we're to be totally dependent on God, that we are to surrender to that. When I, probably the last time you, any of us, struck out having no idea how we were going to manage to get to wherever it was we were going or how we were going to survive, may have been in college, may have been right after college. When I was in college, we went, uh, Jose Jones uh, and I were going on a trip together for a, a history class, actually. We were going to travel down to Alabama, and Jose had a Dodge Dart with 276,000 miles on it. That's even more than your car has, Fred. 276,000. It's not quite as much as your car. 276,000 miles. We're driving down there from North Carolina to Alabama, and I say to Jose, where are we going to stay tonight? Don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Don't know. I say, well, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get there, and we're going to figure it out. I'm like, are you out of your mind? We get there. He calls up the Presbyterian pastor in town. Says, we need a place to stay tonight. <laughs> I'm serious. And the guy found us a place to stay. Jesus says, are you willing to trust me so much that you could strike out following me, not even knowing where you're going to lay your head tonight. Hmm. That's pretty serious surrender. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you watch over us, that you call us to follow, but that you constantly remind us that we can't keep turning back. We can't keep 
looking for other ways to secure our lives. Because with you, it's total trust. Your promise is sure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Faithful God, we pray for your creation, for beautiful nature, bodies of water, and for our very own lives. We pray for our world, for the brokenness and strain we all feel each day, for people with hunger and poverty, for our military and for all those living in war zones. We pray for our world leaders, our country's leaders, our state leaders, and local and community leaders. We give thanks for their leadership and ask that you give them hope for a better future. We pray for your church and the world and for our own church, Harvey Brown. Be with us as we seek your guidance in ministry. Especially be with us as we move closer to our 100-year anniversary. Help us appreciate your part on this journey and allow us to be open to your call to do new things in a fresh way, perhaps a new way, as we move towards what lies ahead for HB Press. Loving God, today there are people in pain and people longing for your healing touch. We pray for those who grieve the death of a friend or family member. We pray for all those who are facing surgery, receiving cancer treatments, and those who are in the hospital. In our own congregation, we pray for all that we see on our prayer lists and all we hold close to our hearts. God, you gave us your Son, Jesus, out of pure love. Help us learn to both be disciples and make disciples in the world. Guide us with your Holy Spirit as we live lives worthy of your call to us. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One way that we can follow Jesus is to give back some of our blessings. Let us now receive our tithes and offerings.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Take these gifts, O God, for the work of this church. Let them stand as signs of your love and faithfulness. In the name of the one who gave himself for us, we pray. Amen. Number 742. I'm going to sing it through one time, and then uh, you join in. We'll sing as long as the Spirit leads us to sing. Is that an A? Um, yes, it was. Not so good. We will walk with God, my brothers. We will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters. We will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will walk with God, my brothers. We will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will walk to God, my brothers, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will walk with God, my brothers, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters. Once again, I'd like to welcome those of you visiting with us. We're delighted that you're here. We hope that you'll come back and worship with us again. And I hope that you will go now into the world realizing that indeed we can depend completely on God for it is in God that we can place our trust and know that his promises, God's promises are sure. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen.